Kai Pacha with the Weekly Paley Report. And this report is actually for July 27th of 2016. And it's not quite Wednesday yet, but I wanted to give you a little shot of the gondola here in Venice. Um, but by Wednesday, the moon is going to be in Taurus. Thursday, she moves into Gemini. And then on Saturday, she moves into Cancer. And on Monday, she comes into Leo. We have the new moon in Leo happening next Tuesday. And it's quite an interesting week, this time period, because it's kind of like, uh, and I'll talk about it a little bit more in the Pele Report, but it's almost like a whale or a dolphin down in the depths of the sea of the water, shooting up, breaching, jumping up out of the water, getting a fresh breath of fresh air, and then diving back down into the deep again. <laughs> Why do I say that? Well. I say that because on Wednesday, the, seven, the 27th, you know, the, both Venus and Mercury are trine Uranus. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, actually, Venus is exactly trine Uranus. And in the meantime, Friday, Uranus goes retrograde. On Saturday, Mercury goes into Virgo. And on Saturday also, the sun squares black moon Lilith. As you will recall from the last Paley report, that sun has moved into Leo. So we've got the sun, Mercury, and Venus all in the sign of Leo. And on Friday, Mercury comes into square Mars. And by then, the moon makes a grand square with the moon's nodes. Saturn, opposite Saturn, square Neptune. So really quite a time with Mercury going into Virgo, Sun square Lilith. It looks pretty intense for Friday and Saturday. And by Sunday, we've got this big change. And here's a big change. We are now coming out to the Grand Canal. The Grand Canal of Venice. Let me give you a little shot here. It's gonna be a little more noisy, but I hope that you get a sense of Venice here at the Grand Canal as the gondola starts to rock a little bit. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> oh my God. Here we go. We're cutting off a boat there and there is, that's the Bridge of Rialto. Yes, the Rialto Bridge. At the time that that bridge was built, it was an architectural masterpiece. Let me just give you a little more of a shot here. Now we're going down the Grand Canal. So what I sense here is that on Friday, we've got Mercury square Mars. We've got that Grand Cross going on with the moon. It looks pretty wild here. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But then, on Monday, the sun trines Saturn. And on Tuesday, Mars moves into Sagittarius. And we have that new moon in Leo. That new moon in Leo is trine to Saturn. So, while we've got some, you know, radical shifts and changes going on and maybe a little arguing all about those changes with the Mercury square Mars, by next weekend, you know, the weekend coming up by the time you hear this report, things are going to iron out a little bit. Things are going to lift up a little bit. So, we're kind of in a space here where we're deep down underwater, but getting ready and heading for the surface. And that surface is going to be on the weekend. So let me look at the camera, tell you a little bit more about what that means, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, well, I just got to go for it because I have gone all the way around this thing, and 
getting the lighting right, getting the silhouette. There's all kinds of people around. There'll probably be people passing around. I am in Baboli Gardens uh, in Florence. It's uh, uh, outside the back of the uh, Palace Pita, where the Medici family used to live. It's the Renaissance time. I think that's Neptune back there, which is totally frickin' appropriate. <laughs> Because I really want to talk about uh, Jupiter opposite Chiron, because this is, um, last week I think I talked a little bit more about Saturn square Neptune and about what began last November, you know, uh, you know, coming in last November and then readjusting, reframing, refiguring, recalculating, redoing through March, April, May. Well, it's this, kind of the same thing with this Jupiter opposite Chiron. And Chiron is in the sign of uh, Pisces, and it has to do with our wound. I see it as the co-ruler of the underworld with Pluto, down there uh, uh, along with Black Moon Lilith, who's now in Scorpio, the sign of the underworld. And then we, and, and Black Moon Lilith works in you know, so closely with Eris, which is now conjoined with Uranus. Uranus stationing now to go retrograde back over Eris again. And, you know, when I, I don't want to give you too much astrology because I know a bunch of you don't know astrology. <laughs> but it would be good if you did. <laughs> Incentive to learn. What we're also working with here is in conjunct aspects. This Mars going, you know, back in, into the later degrees of Scorpio, going direct again through, you know, next week, Tuesday, Mars goes into Sagittarius. We can all jump up and down. Hallelujah. New moon happening, you know, in fire and fire. We're kind of coming out of the underworld. We're coming out of the water. We're coming out of the deep. But, you know, now Mercury moving into, you know, Virgo here is also like giving us this, you know, blast of check this out. New awareness, Mercury, Venus, trining this Uranus, which is conjoined Eris, trining Eris is, is this discord. Eris is discord and strife. She's the sister of Aries, Mars, and she was relentless. And we're in this position now that's really relentless. Like we've got to get this message, like we're all getting beat over the head or beat below the belt or beat up where, beat up, <laughs> you know, somewhere like boom, 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 boom. The universe, the cosmos, you know, is wanting us to see, open our eyes to what? And, and, and this is, you know, the question I've been meditating on and feeling into during, you know, during this past month or so. And, you know, it's going to, like I say, it's going to lighten up. And, it, and it's like, this is the point, and we'll get to the mantra, you know, where it's like we're coming from the depths and, and, and we're, you know, we're rising up, we're rising up and the surface of the water is getting closer and closer and it's getting lighter and lighter and everything is expanding and expanding as we come out of this pressurized, you know, container like an aerosol can, <laughs> you know, and we're just about, it's like the cork on the champagne bottle is about to blow, I think, with this new moon, Mars moving into Sag, we're moving into this fire, but yet, we're at this like critical turning point this weekend, you know, this time period, this end of July. It's really where we're just about there. And yet there's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a moment in time where we can really like get it. And Uranus is illumination. This Mercury Venus trining Okay, you know, to Uranus is just like, aha, like open up your eyes. And, and to me, it's like opening up our eyes to what? You know, Mars is emerging out of the underworld. Black Moon Lilith is still there. Let's look at the underworld. Jupiter is still coming into its third opposition with Chiron. It's not going to be till next month where it really starts to lighten up. And we get... So we've gone down. Venus was, you know, in the underworld, Lilith and Scorpio. This down in underworld is about what? And this quincunx aspect. 
okay and this quincunx aspect is also happening as Jupiter moves through later degrees of Virgo it's going to in conjunct or quincunx okay with Uranus Eris and this is an aspect that has to do with two things the 150 degree aspect from the Virgo side has to do with guilt and on the other side okay 180 plus 30 brings us to 210 degree okay in conjunct aspect is a Scorpio aspect has to do with shame guilt and shame and this guilt and shame is just it's a very interesting oh, what do they call that you know like play with the Sun and Leo and Venus and you know Venus and Leo wanting to exhibit and express and receive love and affection and applause and the spotlight and I'm special and original and unique and what do we hit when it comes to that no you're not <laughs> you're not enough you're not ready you should be ashamed of yourself you should be guilty of this that, that, that. we're emerging you know out of thousands of years of patriarchy it's amazing I was just in Venice you know and we were at the Church of San Marcos and there was actually a guy speaking in Italian right because in line there's this woman who didn't have her shoulders covered she had a, a you know just a, a, a tank top and they gave her a cloth you know she had to buy a cloth to cover her shoulders before she could go into the church and she refused she said no I want to go into the church you know, and I, and I don't want to cover up, okay, my, my shoulders. And, and the guy rejected her, ejected her, kicked her out and said, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed. You are, you are shameful, you know, and it's like, it's like brings up for me even like this Donald Trump and this whole election kind of a thing. And we like to think that there's this age of enlightenment and people are waking up but I'll tell you what there's a huge percentage of the population still enmeshed in old belief systems in old religions in old dogma and 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 there are sparks of light and sparks of awakening and that's just what they are like a sparkler going off and it becomes very important for the sparks to spread the light, to start new communities, to write books, to make movies, to get out there, <laughs> to do little YouTube videos, you know? But like, don't be sp speaking to the choir. Yeah, that's yeah, there's that old saying, you know, you're talking to people who are already know, who are already awake, who are already open, who are already agreeing with you. It's also part of the path and, and part of Leo, this creative self-expression is to be dramatic and bring it, yeah, you know, outside the circle of the tribe and expand the tribe. And what you're going to bump into is like resistance and dogma and the past and the, do, you know, the doctrines, you know, that, you know, have been limiting self-expression, limiting freedom, okay, for so many thousands of years. So this drives us back into ourselves. And this is where Chiron, I always say, your wound becomes your medicine. And this has been a year where we have all in one way or another physically, sexually, emotionally, mentally, spiritually really been confronted with where we have been wounded, where we have been hurt, where someone has said, be ashamed of yourself or you are guilty of trespassing the norms or you are the taboo, you are evil, you are bad, you are wrong. And this brings up you know subconscious memories from persecution times yeah you know where the prophets have been shot hung burned or crucified and the idea here is that we can uh, uh, what I really want to bring forward is just this idea that this wound this going into the dark into the depths of our soul it's where we are humbled it's where we are vulnerable, where we are sensitive. It's our weak spot. It's the chink in our armor. And yet, this is our human 
element. It's actually what binds us together. What holds us together as humanity is that we are all vulnerable. Look at my camera. I'm vulnerable because I set up my camera on a bush. <laughs> wow. Okay, sure. Let's hold the camera now. Golly. So, I'm going to just wrap it up here with the, you know, with the mantra, you know. Like the whale that lives in the depth of the sea, yet bursts forth high in the air. The more I know the depths of my soul, the more I can open and care. This year of purification, this time period from Jupiter opposing Chiron at its first time, and like I spoke of opening that wound, this is opening ourselves to being human, that we're all going to die, and that we have some things in common, that we all have fear, we all have insecurity, we are all vulnerable, and yet this is what binds us together on an emotional, spiritual level. This is the underworld, and the more that we are able to live, to accept, to own that mystery, that vulnerability, that openness, the more we are able to accept relationship, partnership, beauty, union, oneness with other human beings and weave together a new future and new social organizations, religious or banking or financial or so whatever, you know, governmental, military, whatever, that really gives space, gives room, acknowledges and supports, upholds, nurtures even that sensitivity, that humanness that feminine inner childlike quality of innocence and we and we make room for that and we make place for that and we value the importance of that and then we shoot forth like the whale yeah or like the dolphin in all of its glory and we come down and we make a big splash <laughs> Because people see that vulnerability and they see that openness and they see that risk and that courage that it takes to just like <sighs> expose my weaknesses. Oh my God. If everybody exposed their weaknesses, they wouldn't be so weak. There would be actually respect and honor and dignity for the one that has the strength and the courage to be both strong and soft, yes, at the same time. So I just want to encourage, you know, it's like this is a time period where, yes, you don't want to like leap, you know, prematurely. Or it's like, oh, I've got a little bit of the secret. I'm, I'm ready for, you know, to, you know, shout my horn or whatever. But just hold and maintain and know yeah, this week, you know, Bobby Klein, you know, does the I Ching, bobbykline.com. Check it out, the I Ching, and the I Ching for this week is confinement. So the more we can hold, hold, hold within, stay within, and build up that power within, the greater the release, the greater, yes, the energy that will be coming, like I said, Late August, September, and October, it all opens up, yeah. So one more time with the mantra. Like the whale that dwells in the depths of the sea, yet bursts forth high in the air, the more I know the depths of my soul, the more I can open and care. May you open, blossom, burst forth, care and be cared for. Namaste, aloha, so much love.
Yeah.